with line wounds where ideate by the fix stabilize the fracture in the get a flop to cover, which has to be done by the plastic, unless you are the Ferran. Yeah? I don't think it's not 
obviously this is, in my mind, uh, contrary to Sheffield, to be kept on for long. But uh, Sheffield will keep also in the practice of the Islamic procedures as well. That's what we believe in, and I'm good here on managing it. <coughs> we see a lot of deep track infection there in Ghana. So the lead I am dating seems to have an edge to our accommodation, so it seems. That's what we should be doing.
I think that if you can clean up the wound very well, apply traction, bring the safe to the wound. I'm here. Can you see me? Thanks. Oh, where is it? Okay.
it could be that they go from the dunes at the top more than they do, or the other way around. Flexible days are being used for up to 8 or 14 or 16. The object is to achieve a level of reduction, stabilization, or of course the data which have us to consider. It has to be used for a patient or a child with open crisis. They work well for middle third fractures. You will struggle to get it done uh, uh, to stabilize the metaphysical fractures at, at the various ends of the long road. If a fracture is very unstable, flexible nails won't help. Like a long spiral fracture uh, or a long oblique fracture, mostly fragmented fracture. So don't rush away because most fractures of this case will be, but if it's unstable, um, it can be stabilized with the best of lives. But that's a cliche of fractures, but this is what the flexible nails are supposed to do. You have to look at what is causing instability in the fracture. There is a pleasure of stability, which you can see what's happening to the bone there. Okay, there's an uh, element you can get shear forces, compression forces to this structure which seems to be stable. You can get axial stability. You're looking at some form of rotational element to decide whether the structure is stable or not. And um, the biomechanics of the flexible nails is said that it has three contact points, um, which I will demonstrate shortly. So if you take a single P, this is one contact point, and then there's a second contact point here, and the third one there. So you get three contact points, you know, six contact points, which you minimize your uh, for the fraction. That's what's being demonstrated here, point two.
So that it's like somebody holding the bridge and pushing, pushing the wall to stabilize it. This is a very popular instrument to hold wire. Sometimes you need it to bend it. You need a mallet to tease it to go into the uh, bone marrow. You need a test fire to identify your points. Remember you've got important structures at the back of the field.
case that it will not be in the future, it certainly will be needing of problems. We have to purchase an E long or short. And I hope we say it was then you can get short pregnancy. If you got your fragile release back at least the chance are that the limb will be longer. And I could vary from shortening of one to five. In the cases that you have pregnancy alignment to lengthening beyond three centimeters. You need to warn the parents about it before. That is your, your intervention may not necessarily be the cause of the overgrowth. It is the fracture stimulation of the bone growth process. Fracture has to be fully 
be not at the tip of it or it's going to be cast and the cast. And then, you know, some form of support and gravity will do the rest. So I think that child will get away. Uh, right. Any more questions? Any more cases to present? We we have our next ray.
they are actually in charge of. So when there is a fracture, they are taken to the, to the theater and they are called to manage those cases. Um, and those cases that are supposed to be fair, make fair to the service of the And that's how these cases are done. Do the doctors have the opportunity to see the patients at all? Or yes, the exactly. The doctors have the opportunity to see the patients. That is not the government. Okay. Anything different anywhere else? Yes. From the government, the government, all this is so much what you say. But the challenges we are facing at the of the is most of the patients. When they come, they attend to them. But mostly they prefer to go for the local treatment. So all that we have to tell them is that uh, if it's a case of the magic or magic, we tell them that this is what we to do. Especially they hit the like, pasta. They hit it. So in order to avoid, I mean, the we uh, see our materials, we just ask, did you want us to take care of you? He says yes, then we go ahead. Because uh, at some uh, stages we apply the, 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 the plaster before we realize we'll send it home and then next day the patient will come, uh, in, a week, uh, in a month or two months time, the patient will come with complication. The plaster is not there. You ask him, how do you move it? So these are some of the challenges we are, we are facing. So actually the problem with the, the, the herbal treatment is pretty important. I think that and I think uh, yes. the problem is coming from uh, the key hospitals. Usually when we refer them and they go, sometimes they say delay, sometimes they will ask them to pay a certain amount before they will send to them. Because some of the cases, I mean, the, the health insurance doesn't cover. So at the long run, they turn back home. Hmm. So the information is spread around. So it's a problem. Yeah, I think uh, the delay of treatment of the patient is always one big factor. Um, maybe education-wise, there's still a lot we need to do. The thing is that. If we are able to demonstrate our treatment is effective, the patients will come. Um, if we don't reduce it well, we just apply the plaster, and at the end of it, all the plaster is not united. You tell their friends, they will come. About uh, a decade ago, no many Ghanaians would have joint atroplasty because they didn't know much about it. They would refuse it. They would go for ghetto stone because they didn't know anything better than that. But by gently introducing education and the service, you can see how it is growing. If it's effective, they will count. Um, I personally feel that uh, looking back seven years ago, eight years ago, before, uh, just before I started collaborating with St. Joseph, you had a hostel you still have it? Yes. No. But it's not as congested. No, it's on it. It's on it. It's changed. It? Yeah. It's, it's changed. Yeah, the hostel was full of patients waiting to come in. And some of them would stay there for average of about months before coming in. He might as well go and try to have out treatment. He, he, he might get away. So the hospital practices were not encouraging the patients to come for treatment. But now it has changed. Not completely, but it has changed for the better. Yes. So, but I feel some trauma management should occur in the district. If we can get people to in adequate uh, yeah, A long term solution would be if we can have postgraduate in uh, orthopedic nursing. Because, for instance, when they started with the, the eye nursing, we have a lot of our eye nurses managing our eye clinics, and when they have problems, they bring the specialists to work with. The same was done with ENT nursing. The anesthesia is wonderful. Most of our hospitals are manned by yes. uh, anesthetists. Yes. They are doing very well. Yeah, but think, there's no medical level. Yeah. And the medical outside in the district is so overworked. Because we are seeing virtually everything, pediatrics, 
of Senkaini, in every case they come to you. So when you see this of orthopedic and it's complex, it's beyond what you can manage. Yes. You quickly have to okay. yeah. if they get a middle grade yeah. level to yeah. at least uh, do some of these things. It will help us yeah, a long I think day. we haven't addressed our problems at all. Um, nurses. We can get the training to manage it. And the and the clusters are there. Um, they go for a fresher course to improve the uh, We leave the specialized cases for the specialist to handle. The problem about training orthopedic surgeons is that it is good to train them, but at the same time, you must have the things they need to work with. St. Joseph is lucky to rely on some other assistance with commercial. I don't think the government is responsible for arrangements. So, um, something needs to move. Uh, many more people need to be trained and the material they need to do the work should be available. Sometimes the POB has to be purchased by patients from somewhere else to come for their treatment and so much supporting that we can't even in POB. We know that traditional herbalists can do the POB. They bring together herbs, they put sticks, and they are very good. A bit difficult. There are a number of areas where the rocks here are contain a lot of things. Last time we came here, you know? Halleck Hospital Battle. We, we normally get a lot of uh, mass casualties because we are near the Akron Battle Highway. I have my yes. children there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a lot of casualties. So yeah. what we've done is to actually train the nurses there and we ourselves. So when they come, they know the steps to take uh, to take care of this. Thing. But unfortunately, we don't have an orthopedic surgeon. What we have is a general surgeon there. So most of our open fractures we normally stabilize and then repair either to uh, St. Joseph's or Juja, or St. Anthony or Juja, or to Accra. As I said, the frustrating when they get to Accra is, is really hectic. So we realize that most of the, the, the herbal centers in my area too, they are that area, there are a lot of this prayer camp and herbal centers. So they, they tend to see a lot of this. In fact, some of them even come to the hospital to request, request for patients to come to the hospital for x-rays. And they take the x-rays to them. And then they, 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 they manage them. You only see the patient if there are complications. Then they report back to us. So, they so have they have they more so they have yes. Yes. So they have become as well. Yes. Sometimes, even when they want to do this, uh, do their reductions, they always they make the request to the patient to come to the hospital and ask. They ask for the anesthetist to come and give them from the doctor. Yes. The key problem, I think, is from. Well, there was an accident in uh, road in Ghana from Accra to Tomasi. There's no trauma center. I don't know. Maybe we'll know what to do about this. There is uh, a worldwide program, I think. I suspect that. It's a huge center. It's a trauma center, but it's currently a fan center. Yes, so you have to be very careful. The soundboard is there all right, but it's, it's the structure, the human resources. The mistake we made in Ghana is constant. And you think that you are going to employ human beings when you are writing the project, yes. ah, training yes. of human resources. Yes. You go to Polygo and they are wearing the ground, you see them digging. And then you ask them, have they sent people outside for change so that by the time they finish, yes. the people will be using it? They say no. <laughs> well, what I've seen is right. Um, now, you know about Kuta Kute? Kuta Kute was put up by an American. Yeah, American. Black American. Yeah. Black American. Yeah. He was looking for his roots, wasn't it? And he couldn't find his roots. And the last point of call was Ghana. 
And he thought, okay, he can adopt Ghana. This is what I'm going to do. So he put up a $3 million facility yeah. at Mampong. At Mampong. Yeah, yeah. And after he's finished, then he started going around looking for people to work in it. Then he started going around looking for equipment for, for people to donate. It's quite common. Even your hospitals in New Sims, a lot of us make a lot of noise about the new structure, which you didn't go side by side <coughs> with human resources. Um, some of us were probably, I don't know what to say, they thought we were a bit, uh, <coughs> making too much noise. Their own, um, their own serious, you know, misgivings. <coughs> but I think, I think that, I mean, I might not be the right person, but I've been coming to Ghana many, many years, working with people like you. I think your priority should be right. You can fight for your rights and also... They're already in a great situation and you need to catch up with the blood loss. Um, consider which of the injuries are the most life-threatening. So if you've got a femoral fracture and bilateral arm fractures, the femoral fracture is the one that you need to address first as it's the one that they could die from. And as we said, temporary external fixation of a femoral fracture will stop the bleeding and then you've got time to plan your definitive fixation later on. Um, complex polytrauma, so um, one case which we had recently was a gentleman who came in having been knocked over by a car. He fractured both his femur and the left tibia and one femoral fracture was segmental with an intra-articular component and then the other one was open with some bone loss. So in that situation we nailed the right femur which was the open one so that we cleaned out the wounds and then you know, we definitively fixed the right side. The left side which was Intra-articular as well and segmental was going to be a more complex fracture to manage. So first of all, that was just temporarily X-fixed. Um, and then the tibia was X-fixed as well. And then we went back once the patient was stable, fixed the femur and then fixed the tibia last of all. So really think about what order you're doing everything and you certainly don't need to do everything at once. Um, femoral fractures, you need to think about whether a plate or a nail is the most appropriate according to the fracture. And some fractures you can use either. Um, with more complex fractures, so say this patient who's got a fused hip, um, you find it very difficult to put an anti-grade nail in because you just can't get the leg across in a good position for your entry point. And in that situation, you can think about maybe a plate or a retrograde nail up through the knee. Femoral nailing techniques, so traction tape again is very useful. Um, think about whether you're going to go anti-grade or retrograde according to the position of the fracture, um, whether you need to openly reduce and use cables to supplement your fixation. So if it's a difficult fracture pattern or if the patient's very unstable and you want a quick operation, then don't hesitate to just open the fracture um, and you can quickly stabilise and get on with the other injuries. Difficult thermal nails, so as we've said, the ones which are segmental or reversibly are going to be harder to fix and stabilise. And you need to think about, um, as we said, don't fix them in a various position because that will fail, as you can see from this example. So you really want an anatomical reduction and sometimes you're going to need to open those to get that. Segmental fractures, so beware the missed femoral neck fracture. You can get completely carried away with a segmental fracture and then not realise that hairline crack at the femoral neck and then you find that later on which makes things rather tricky. With the tibia, again, ATLS, these are more likely to be open um, femoral fractures. Um, you can think about conservative in some situations versus surgical. Again, temporary stabilisation, so if in doubt, a plaster cast or an X-fix by you time before your definitive stabilisation and then always bear in mind vascular injury with a high velocity trauma. So, you can conservatively treat these. Um, you need to very carefully think about whether the fibula is intact or not. If the fibula is not intact, then a lot of the time those are going to be unstable and you might be better off nailing them. If the fibula is intact, then sometimes you can get away with conservative treatment in a well-moulded plaster, but you need to watch these like a hawk as they tend to drift off in various. So beyond now, uh, the important things to think about are your um, position of the patient. So you can do these on traction, or you can do them freehand, and there's lots of different ways, either just bending the knee up, or you can put the leg into a figure of four and get your entry point that way. Um, think about your entry point. So if the fracture is very proximal, then you need quite a high entry point, and even sometimes go through the tip.
for your plateau or give you more control over proximal fragments. Most of the time we ream um, tibial nails and femoral nails. There's not really any indication not to ream nowadays. Um, and then most of the time again we use locking nails, but you can also use expandable nails in certain situations depending on what, um, what you've got available. So entry point, as we said, if it's a very distal fracture, the other thing that you can think about is a pan tailor nail, and you can put that up through the calcaneus and get fixation into the tibia, and that's quite good with the elderly patients, or if you've got a stiff ankle already, or it's an intra-articular penile-type fracture, and you don't feel comfortable plating those. Um, it'll leave you with a fused ankle, but it's a stable ankle that they can work on, especially if it's somebody in a manual job. Consider supplementary fixation, so, so it's a, if it's a very proximal fracture um, and you don't feel that you've got enough control with just a nail, you could also put a plate on, but be very wary of those, as again, you're, you're stripping the tissues and disrupting blood supply for healing. Um, elderly osteoporotic, as we said, they've got very cheesy bones sometimes and you don't get a good fix with an antiquarious nail. So you can think about a pan tailor nail or even um, a plate, and with the plate, just beware of the soft tissues and try and not strip too much. Um, and then your, your get out clause is amputation. So, even with the best will in the world, in a UK teaching hospital, with everything that we've got at our disposal, sometimes the plates and the nails get infected and they end up with an amputation, and we often wonder should we have done that in the first place. Um, tibial plates, so with proximal fractures where there's some combination, so, so these two examples. Um, you wouldn't really control those with a tibial nail because you wouldn't have much of a fixation in your proximal fragment just with the locking screws. So think about plating those. Um, and then if you've already got hardware in there, then obviously you can't put a nail down. So again, in those situations, you may need to just put a plate on. And with those, so you make a minimally invasive approach, so a small incision at the top, try and just tunnel the plate through. If you don't disturb the fracture site, then fix it at the other end and that way hopefully you preserve some of the blood supply. Tibial penile fractures, we get a lot of these in my centre. Um, there's a lot of destruction of the articulate surface and often, again, will warn the patients big risk of arthritis. So a two millimetre step in the articular surface increases your osteoarthritic risk massively. And again, these are very prone to infection if you fix them with plates and you need to think what's best for your patient. If it's been an open fracture and it presents to you two weeks late, you may just be better off with the spanning X fix rather than putting plates in, everything gets infected and they end up with an amputation. Surgical approach, so um, you can consider an anteromedial or a true anterior with a posterior buttress, so you sort of sandwich the bits of bone in between two plates. Beware of tissue stripping and a high risk of infection. Um, and then consider bridging, as we said, with an external fixation or traction may be better in some situations. And amputation if it's delayed and an open fracture, that might be the best way with an artificial limb to get them back to work. Antromedial, these are good if you've just got comminution, say, of the anterior aspect and none of the posterior, so you've got something to buttress the plate onto um, and you can achieve quite a good reduction of the articular surface. Or if it's a very distal tibial fracture, um, there's not an articular component, but again, you're not going to get much grip with the nail. Um, the anterior ones, think about those if you want to um, try and buttress your anterior fracture fragments, you can supplement those with a posterior plate as well as their posterior fragments, a bit like a tibial plateau, but beware of tissue stripping. Um, going on to the humerus, the main thing to think about is the radial nerve. Um, is it close to the elbow or the shoulder? Can you get away with conservative treatment? And the humerus is very forgiving of that. Um, think about either bracing or a good moulded plaster or a hanging cast and then finally fixation if you absolutely have to. So conservative approach, size matters. If you've got a very large patient, um, the fracture will bend. Um, but you can get away with that. Um, and that will be enough to give them a functioning arm because you've still got movement at the shoulder and at the elbow. They'll still be able to eat, um, comb the hair, go to the toilets, which are the main things that you need to do. Humeral reamed nails, again, as we said with the tibia, beware of your bone stock. So if you don't have good bone stock proximally, or if you think the fracture extends proximally, don't put a nail 
down because you won't get a good fix and this, this nail cuts out. Um, expandable nails, um, some centers have these and basically you put them down the same as a, um, any nail but then you inflate them with saline and they expand like an umbrella and it will give you some control. Again, if the bone stock is bad, they can actually just blow the bone apart, so you need to use those cautiously, um, and they've got poor rotational control. But in some situations, if you don't have x-ray, that may be a way of getting around um, limited resources. Proximal humeral plate, these are really good. They're contour, low profile, and they give effective grip of the proximal fragment. But obviously, you need to make sure the screws don't go into the joints. So there's a bit of skill involved in putting them in, but they give it a good result. Mid-shelf tumor um, plates, posterior approach is the workhorse approach. You can get to most fractures using that, um, and just make sure you've got a thick plate and you need six, quarter, six screws in, so three proximal, three distal to your fracture site, otherwise it will just fall apart and a big plate. Um, surgical approach, most of the time posterior, some of the fractures, if they're more distal, anterolateral, um, if it's intra-articular and molecular and osteotomy, and always think about the radial nerve. That's one thing you've got to check after your operation and before. Radius and ulna, um, conservative versus surgical. Um, with us, we're quite proactive and we'll fix those things. So with this fracture, we fixed it, although it's just an isolated radial fracture you may feel that it's more appropriate if you've got limited resources to treat that conservatively and that's entirely reasonable. Um, basic approaches to the radius and the ulna, Henry's approach to the radius, so it's just straight down the forearm and then subcuticular for the ulna and there's a big debate which one you fix first. Um, some people say fix the radius first, other people say fix the ulna. The radius heals but the ulna didn't, so you can see long union there and then we went back a second time and um, Replated the ulna and then regrafted just using our yak press bone graft, and that's healed. So, again, sometimes even though the radius and ulna has got a really good blood supply, they can go on to non union if it's a high velocity injury and there's been lots of periosteal stripping. So, I'm here to teach you, but according to our national newspapers, we need to be learning from you. So, um, this says copying ideas from poorer countries such as India and Ghana are the key to saving the NHS, the watchdog says. So there you go. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got a very proximal fracture, you might not get good control. In most cases, you may think about painting. Do you get a lot of open fractures here? Yeah. Do you, do you get them on the day of the injury or do you get them on a while later? You see a lot of them. So sometimes, especially in areas where they are not sure the patient gets the referral, sometimes they are tempted to want to do their handling tests. My class works really well. Um, what I always say is make sure they're still moving their elbow and their wrist. You don't want them to just be braced like that for six to eight weeks because they'll just stiffen up all over. So it's quite important that although they're in a hanging class, they're still taking the sling out and moving the elbow and the wrist and the fingers and everything as well. But it can work really well. As I said, the humerus is very, un uh, it's very forgiving and you can get away with quite a lot of angulation and sharp and still have a good function. Did you say that uh, most of us, uh, those who come from the district, don't have access to the same class. Right. So normally you have to try and do conservative. Yeah. So what you do is that, uh, what we also do, uh, because the NHIS doesn't cover implants. Uh -huh. uh, so normally we'll try to the negative, yeah. uh, and then uh, we'll have the fellows to go and prepare and come for the same. Yeah. So when it comes, if it's fortunate enough that there's a kind of union, then that is a, if it's a roughly displaced, he is aware and he is prepared for the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. So those from the district normally have to put on something, maybe because of the swelling, uh, back, uh, back slab, or then the refer. And then we take the decision in the schedule of consultation with the patient himself. Uh, so that is the whole piece of the built from the district, and then the referrals. So you're putting lots of patients on traction? Uh, normally, it's a bit. I don't know.
Ah, no, the family the Hebrews, rather. I'm talking about the Hebrews. <laughs> the Hebrews. But in the long pool, normally uh, they go to the moon space because they have the, the latest technique in terms of herbs or what. And then the patients, after some time, realize that uh, the legs are not the same. <laughs> and uh, the herbalists will also say, so I finish with time, spiritual, everything. Is now you can go to the hospital. So they come with a lot of my unions, non unions, infected, a whole lot of cocktails. We got it easy, Yeah, we do it with the Yeah, I don't know. 
we concentrate a lot more on the substitute aspect. And also we know the foundation. If you get a fracture to the fabric, that is what is caused by the wound from inside. You can also get a fracture which is caused by an injury from outside. Those are the things that protect us the wound. One of the leaches coming inside, or the food poking out of the skin. Yes, skin component. For us, we get very poking inside with all the dead things. So this fracture is actually from the wound created by the fracture from inside. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
compressing resins and free ceramic for a fracture with a split. Sometimes it's just a fracture. Do not puncture wood in the medicine department. Only a small percentage of what you go there will be relevant to the patient's care. And in the majority of the infections that the patients um, when we keep our car in hospital. Now the larger the volume of culture medium flour, the debris from the streets, the farm, the higher the risk of infection. All day in contaminated tissue, loose bone, loose foreign body, or loose body should be removed. The wound must be left open and delay primary closure. Only those bones you remove, not bones uh, attached to soft tissue, unless you think it's the soft tissue attachment is damaged as well. Vegan nets and vessels, if they are repaired, should be covered, including that this food. This will be a tertiary level, but you need to know. Now, you may revisit the theater any time to clean up to be sure that you remove the non viable tissue. But if you have a vacuum compressors, they can be the shape for you as well. The most important anti bacterial step is for the environment. Try and achieve your thesis. Immediate closure may be necessary in plain cases, but it's going to be done with caution. We spoke about primary, fracture healing, and secondary. Skin healing to us not similar processes. Why do we need no children? There you go. If you close the wound prematurely, you can get a lot of bleeding, creates a lot of pressure, especially in the fatty bleeding. Delayed closure of the wound can be helpful so that the subsequent procedure can continue to be contaminated.
went to the hospital. Of course, they were really very little. Uh, they wanted to the wait for the team to come and teach him. He thought he had a better place to go for treatment. So he went to hell. His patient is still waiting. So the people all over here need to take infected sanitation. Well, the world has been well looked after by the doctor said, so now they will need to come. And they're waiting for us to treat somewhere in the Eastern region. So these are the things to look out for before you do the skin graft. I think they did not say they do skin graft in this country, don't they? The orthopedic surgeon don't do much, isn't it? The plastics. To me, the orthopedic surgeon should be trained to do skin graft as well. They do it. Yeah. They okay. Oh well, there are some that would go beyond skin grafting, even pedicle graft. Bio ingenious graft, then you have to send away. We are not experts in that. Yes. You do. You do it, don't you? Yeah. So I think uh, in this country. Of the patient's trauma surgeon should have an exposure to this. How long will the patients have to wait in Colombo for the graft? Tell me. A long time. It's not because the doctors don't want to work, but they work well.
they think it, it, it minimizes the uh, infection. I don't know. What you see there is the demycin beads, uh, which are kind of mechanical beads you put in the means of the body so you can remove them. The use of beads is momentarily in England. I did it. 
done within 24 hours, whatever. Uh, if there are no compromises like uh, lab or vessel, so that you know, 24 hours is safe. You don't package the patient from the district with a farm, you know, the oranges inside the wound or whatever. You clean up, you wash, you read. You start the active process. Um, what is the aim of your surgery? You open up the wound, you remove uh, the protein tissue, and you stabilize. If possible, you close. If you get it right the first time, you save the patient. If you don't get it right the first time, the patient goes through more chronic problems. So it's very important that in the districts, you clean up, you start the right treatment before you pass the patient to St. Joseph's.
I think they're showing up that they can cover it. Confirmation to clean it, usually comes in meters. Uh, the commonest we there is about three meters to wash it. Yeah. 